I've been building Bujin decks for near a decade now. In the current iteration of the deck, it's very heavily based on comboing into a control board and then winning on that following turn. Today I'm going to show you four combos that you can do with my version of the deck. The latest profile of that deck was posted not too long ago, so it should still be easily findable on my channel. And an update to that deck will be posted next month after I've gotten a few new cards in the mail that I've been waiting on and just fine-tuning some stuff. So all of these combos today are TCG legal, and they only use cards up through Photon Hypernova, I believe there's nothing after that. And I've even included one combo in here for Master Duel because they do not have Giant Champion Sargas or Galaxy Photon Dragon. So if you're interested in that, that will be combo number two, and it will all be timestamped down below. So without further ado, let's get you going with combo number one. All right, so number one here, this is going to be the standard uh, 1.5 card combo. You just need a Tori Foon plus any other Buja monster will end with an Ahashima and a F-Zero on board. So we'll start with normal summoning the Tori Foon, activate the effect, special summon two. I like to go for Mahitatsu if I haven't used one this turn. And then uh, lately I've been going for the uh, Turtle just to get it in the graveyard early because you're able to uh, Turtle to negate like an Imperm. We'll then overlay for Galaxy Photon Dragon one of our newest and greatest pieces of support for this deck. We'll detach and we're gonna search for that Photon Sanctuary. Put it in the hand, of course. Then we'll activate our Photon Sanctuary. We'll get our two tokens. The Photon Dragon can make them level eights. It doesn't matter even if you did do it uh, because you're still gonna be able to make the Ahashima with it. Ahashima's effect will get us back one and two. Doesn't matter the position they're in because we're just gonna overlay with them for the Susanoo. So from here you can just make the F-Zero by overlaying these two. You would have the option to make this the uh, Tsukiyomi instead if you wanted to discard and draw if your rest of your hand was pretty bad, but I like to make the Susanoo and get the search out of it. What you detach doesn't matter so much, so if you wanted to like put another body on board, which is kind of useless because you can't do anything with it, assuming these are the only two really playable cards in your hand pulling off this combo, so I would probably just grab the Torifun to use for next turn, and then overlay for that F-Zero, and then make the big boy. And you want to make sure that it is in the zone being pointed to by the Ahashima, because that means when you use its effect to negate and steal something, or just negate something, the Ahashima's effect will activate to pop something in the back row. So if you time it right, you can get a, a nice little stop right there. Easy 1.5 card combo. This is like the main basis for how I built the rest of the combos in the deck. And we'll move on to the next one. All right, for our second one, we've got a uh, combo that's going to be geared towards Master Duel because they don't have Galaxy Photon Dragon yet, so you can't do that first combo in that game at this time. Hopefully that changes for you guys soon. But this does not use Galaxy Photon Dragon. We'll use Gaga Gaga Magician instead. It's a little bit worse because it requires an additional card that meets certain criteria. So we need the Torifun as the play starter, like in every combo. We need the Arasuda or any of the other extenders. So that's Arasuda, Harume, or Haruko. So the, the Pendulum Rank Up guy, Harume Special Summons itself from hand by banishing, and then Arasuda can summon itself from hand when something is banished. And then the third card is just any Bujin monster. So we have the Yamato for this one. So the play will start the same way with Tori Foon Effect. Grab the Mahitatsu and uh, whatever Bujingi you want to pull out of the deck. We'll use the Mahitatsu effect to banish the Torifun out of the graveyard, dump another Bujingi. That banish will trigger the Arasuda, letting us special summon it from the hand, and then we're going to overlay for the Susanoo. We'll use Susanoo's effect to get our rank up uh, Pendulum guy, so Haruko will go to the hand, and then we'll use the Haruko in the hand, and use its effect to rank up the Susanoo into an Amaterasu. Amaterasu's effect will activate. Now, here we need to detach the Susanoo or whatever Bujin exceeds you put down there uh, because we need it in the graveyard for the Magician. And then we'll special summon back, not the Torifun, because we want that to be available to use its effect again because you can recycle it with the Amaterasu. So now I'll use our two spare bodies to make the Ahashima. Ahashima's effect will activate, letting us special summon our spare from the hand, and then we'll use the Mahitatsu out of the graveyard 
Then we'll overlay these into the Magician, and then Magician's effect will activate. We'll target the Susanoo, so its effects get negated, but it doesn't have material anyway. And then we will overlay the Magician and the Susanoo for the little F0, and then for the big F0, and your end board here off of the uh, two and a half card combo, more or less, is going to be the Utopic Draco Future, which has the negate and the steal effect, the Ahashima that will be able to pop a monster if Amaterasu detaches material, and then you want to leave, I guess which one the arrow points to doesn't matter, but you want to leave one of them being pointed to so that you get that pop, and Amaterasu can do that, which none of the other Bujins can other than, I suppose, Kagutsuchi, but this one is a lot easier to trigger it. On your opponent's turn, once they've performed an action that you would be allowed to chain to, you would be able to use its effect to detach and return one of your banished Bujins back to your hand, so that's why we want to leave the Torifun in the banner zone, is because on your opponent's turn, uh, they activate a, you know, tanky of their own. You would respond with the Amaterasu, detach, get the Torifun back, pop the card they activated, and you still have this negate and steal on board, and then on your next turn you got a little bit of gas to work with. So there's your master dual combo. So now our third one here is going to be kind of similar to that last one, same two and a half cards, Torifun, a different extender this time just to show you, and then our spare Bujin is Centipede in this instance, but it can be literally any of your Bujins, and the end board will be Ahashima, Amaterasu, and Sargus, so that you have a little bit of control in there, similar to that last board setup. So we started out the same again, Torifun effect, Get yourself a Mahitatu, get yourself a Bujingi of whatever sort. We'll use the effect to special summon. Susanoo's effect is going to activate, and we will search our rank up again. Our rank up will activate. We'll rank up the Susanoo into an Amaterasu. Amaterasu will use its effect. So now in this instance, it doesn't matter which one you detach because this doesn't use the Magician. But I would go with... it doesn't really matter. You'll end up banishing it for the Haruma here in a second. We'll get the special summon off of Amaterasu. We'll special summon Harume by banishing one. Probably should have banished the Torifun in that instance, or banished the Torifun off of the Mahitatsu in the beginning of the combo, just so it's in there for your Amaterasu to target on your opponent's turn. We'll then special summon our Ahashima. Ahashima's effect. We're gonna activate. We'll get the Centipede, and we'll get the Harume, and then we'll overlay for Merrymaker, and then we'll overlay for Sargus, and now this end board does a similar thing except they all can be triggered off of just the Amaterasu. So Sargus, whenever you detach material from an Xyz monster, it will either bounce or pop a card on the field. It does target, but it'll bounce or pop a card on the field, and then the Ahashima will kill some back row. So when you pass turn, this is why you probably would want to put the Torifun in the banish zone, you would wait for them to commit an action that you can respond to. Amaterasu effect, put the Torifun back in hand, pop or spin something, and then pop something in the back row. So it's a nice little control board. If you have this combo, you also have the uh, Galaxy Photon Dragon combo, and I believe this one you also can't use in Master Duel because I don't think they have Sargus yet. But if you were to open that, you know, those three cards, you could probably just do the F-Zero combo that I showed you at the beginning, but have that extra extender to make another whatever you want anyway. So it's just another option, and really a lot of this is just meant to show more like how you would follow up almost, so not necessarily a turn one, because this deck is kind of like a spam control type of deck. A lot of your extra deck monsters are meant to be more like Floodgate-like, and so you're really trying to just set up a good board for some interruption on your opponent's turn, then you get passed back. Then on the next turn, I'd probably go for like F-Zero, Kagutsuchi, uh, any of your other Link monsters you might play. I've been testing out the Nightmares a little bit. You just want to set up a nasty board after that because you controlled that first turn well enough, and then your second turn you can usually go for that massive damage, unless they just wipe you out, you know. Sometimes that happens. All right, and this last one's just for fun, just to kind of show some power for the deck. You're never going to open a five-card hand like this. It's Torifun, one of each extender, and then a spare body for Ahashima. Really, it's more to show you, like, after turn one, you've established your control board. Turn two, hopefully you'll have set yourself up to have another Torifun to use on your next turn, and then maybe another extender, and you can just go crazy with the special summons. So we'll just show that off a little bit. We'll start this off the same. Torifun, activate. We'll get our main Mahitatsu and a hair. We'll use the Mahitatsu, why not? Set up that graveyard a little bit, and then what you send, send whatever you feel like. The turtle is good. We won't trigger the Arasuda here because we have the Harume, 
we'll make the Susanoo. We'll activate the Susanoo. Because I already have all the extenders, you can pretty much just pick whatever you want. I'm going to say we'll grab an extra Harume because I like it a little bit better than the Arasuda sometimes. We'll use the Haruko that we drew via the Heart of the Cards at the beginning of the duel for that Amaterasu. Amaterasu's effect will activate. We'll detach one. It doesn't matter which one. We'll special summon the Haruko back. So now we will go with the Harume. And we'll banish the Mahitatu in Graveyard. This will trigger the Arasuda and we will use it. We'll then make our Ashima, use the effect, and we'll use our spare in the hand and whatever you feel like out of the graveyard. Not whatever you feel like. You need to banish one for this other Harume, so you needed to clear it with this Link Summon. And you can't banish Harume for Harume Special Summon effect, so leave the not Harume in the graveyard. In this case, it was Arasuda. Then we can overlay again for the Susanoo, and we'll Susanoo search again. What do you think we're grabbing? It's another Arasuda. You should have guessed that. So now we have more bodies. So now we will special summon again. So this is not once per turn for either of these. I hope you're understanding the beauty of this deck now just a little bit. Arasuda will trigger again, put it on board. We'll make our F0 with these two here. The big boy, big F0, and then we'll make the Merry Maker. We'll leave the Harume up because it's got the best stats. And then the Merrymaker will be a Sargus. And look at this board. So you have the Ahashima, which will trigger on F-Zero's activation to pop back row. You have the F zero that can negate and steal a monster or just negate an effect of a monster in the hand of the graveyard. And you have a Sargus, which will pop or bounce a card on the field whenever a material is detached from the F-0 here. So. If you let your opponent play one or two cards that isn't a board wipe, let them set up a little bit of something, and then F0 something to steal it, put it on your side of the field, or just kill it anyway and negate that effect, then pop back row, then spin something else, you have ended a turn pretty much outright. There are not going to be a whole lot of decks that can play through you just ruining a board like that. So once again, that's not really like a reasonable combo to expect to be able to play, but if turn one you can get these two set up, Turn two, it's really easy to get this guy set up, and then whatever other Bujin you might want. And then you just have all sorts of control, all sorts of Floodgate-like effects, and it really gets pretty nuts, pretty fun from there. All right, that'll do it for today. I just wanted to share these combos with you guys. Hopefully it gave you a little bit more of a taste of how I build the deck. It seems like Bujins have a lot of fans out there, and I'm more than happy to share all of my wisdom with all of you. If you'd like to do the same for me, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Subscribe if you want to see the updated deck profile for Bujins coming out in a month. Happy combo crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.